Once you start digitizing with the walk normal tool and get familiar with how to create the elements, uh, you'll want to look at the properties for the walk um, to better facilitate uh, your design. So you can change your stitch length, you can change whether it goes back and forth across itself, how thick it is, and then you can also change the stitch type to some extent um, and still have those stitches follow that form. So let's take a look at some of those properties. Up on screen I have a design that we did in the uh, walk input method video and I'm going to just grab this top piece here to look at some of those properties. I'm going to drag it off and I'm going to zoom in on it so that we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to put it into 3D. There we go. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to properties so that we can see those properties. Let's resize this and get it out of our way a little bit so you can see a bit better what's going to happen. So the first one uh, that we have is stitch type and I'm going to talk about just the walk normal to start. Uh, walk normal is just one stitch that goes one right after the other just like a straight stitch on a single uh, standard sewing machine. The next property that you have is the stitch length and that is measured uh, typically in points. And right now we've got it set to a 20 point uh, stitch length. If I go to a 40 point stitch length and hit apply, my stitches just got longer and you can see that with those needle penetrations. They're just twice as far apart. All right, uh, next we have retrace. So if I turn this on, it will meet back up with itself. So it will go over itself one way, then the other. And when you have retrace on, so let's make this a light, light gray, and we will make the expanded points visible. I'll turn it out of 3D so you can see. So these little uh, pluses are my stitch uh, penetrations. With retrace on, the needle penetrations do line up by default, but you can offset them by a certain amount. So let's go 20 points in this case so that we should start seeing them, yep, halfway in between. So now it will go uh, forward for 40 points and then it will go back every 40 points. The difference is that it will offset it uh, by 20. So in this case, they're, they're kind of hitting right in the middle. Now in 3D, you're not going to see this um, because in 3D, uh, the, the computer is showing you kind of a perfect view and you're only seeing the top stitching. You're not seeing anything that's, that's underneath of it. Uh, but in reality, what you'll see is your needle penetrations will be a little bit offset. So it will go forward and then it will come back and your needle penetration will split your, your other stitches. So um, it, it gives it less of um, a defined stitch look um, and it doesn't really blur the line, but it, but it, it gives it a, a different look. Um, so offset is a way to kind of massage your needle penetrations so that they, they don't line up, they don't uh, pull as deep in your fabric. Um, and for something that's a, a more organic, uh, look more like fur or something like that, I, I'm far more likely to do it this way. Um, for something that's a little more decorative where you want uh, a, a little bit more stitch definition, uh, then go ahead and have those needle penetrations line up and that will look uh, quite nice actually. But you do have that option available to you that's available in the retrace and it's what that offset is for. By default, it is set to zero. All right, so let's set this back to zero. And then let's look at the next one, which is curve compensation. Um, I'm going to digitize some really, really ugly elements real quick. And I will duplicate this and I will move this over here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do, let's just go grab that S because that's got a straight bit. Yeah, let's grab this guy. So we'll grab that. I'm going to duplicate it and I will move it over here. I'll shrink it down a little bit um, and let's make it that gray again just so that it's easier to see those needle penetrations. And then let's change our stitch length to 40. Let's shrink it down a little bit more. And I will turn curve compensation off for this. Let's duplicate it and I'll move the second one over here. 
and I will turn curve compensation on for this one. So the one on the left has a longer stitch length and curve compensation turned off. The one on the right has a longer stitch length but curve compensation is turned on. And as you can see, with the one on the right where curve compensation is turned on, the stitches where the curves get tighter get smaller to better follow that curve. Where the areas are longer, straighter, or uh, a more gentle slope, they will try to go back out to what the specified stitch length is uh, to save you stitches and give you what you're asking for. But uh, where the, the curve starts to come in, it really starts to kind of sink down uh, and, and go a little bit shorter on your stitch length. Now, it won't go so short that you're going to start getting thread breaks. Um, and if you go really, really tight with your curves, you, you just can't make a super, super tight curve with stitches when it's really, really small because you just can't curve a piece of thread. So a stitch is just one piece of thread between two needle penetrations, so it's going to be completely straight. So to make a better curve, we shorten that stitch length, and that's what curve compensation does for you. So we've looked at uh, stitch length, we've looked at retrace uh, with an offset. Um, we've looked at curve compensation, so let's look at stitch type. So normal stitch type is, again, straight stitching, just like a, a normal sewing machine. Uh, the next one is a bean stitch. Now this one is uh, kind of like a triple walk, where it goes over itself three times by default. Um, I'm going to zoom in real tight and kind of draw on the screen. It's not something that you're going to be able to see in 3D, but I'm gonna draw it on the screen uh, to hopefully get the idea across. So what will happen is you will move forward and then back and then forward again, and then forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward. And it will continue to do that uh, in a line, doing three stitches kind of for, for every what normally would be one. And I drew a kind of, little mini football shape looking piece right there uh, because on screen you won't notice this but when it sews out you will start to notice it. You'll have one stitch and then it will put the other stitch right on top of it and it will sort of like push and wiggle its way down a little bit and then you'll have the other one go on the other side of it a little bit and so you do get a slightly bowed effect um, and so it gets a little bit beefier, a little bit um, bolder and so what that can do for you is give you a little bit more uh, visual impact. And typically, it won't be as thick or as bold as, let's say, a small satin stitch. So you can get away with a little bit finer detail with a little bit bolder line. Um, and all of that will uh, change depending on your needle size and your thread weight and all that kind of good stuff. But as far as digitizing the stitches, this is uh, definitely another option for you for those smaller areas. All right, uh, properties for a bean stitch. You have drawing all over your properties. Let me erase that, sorry guys. Uh, all right, so uh, properties for that. You have, again, your stitch length. That makes sense, that's the, the distance between those needle penetrations. Um, you have your bean thickness, which is uh, set to three right now. You can do any odd number between three and 13. Um, it is very rare for me to go above three. It is exceedingly rare for me to go above five. Um, but if you have need for it, you can do it. And then again, you have retrace. So uh, the, the funny thing about that would be you're doing three forward and three back. So you're going to end up with six thick if you do that. So be careful. Um, don't be like me and uh, keep leaving it on accidentally. I do it all the time to myself and I have to go back and turn them all off. But the reason I do that when I'm doing some of that detail work where I'm using a walk type tool or a, a walk input method, um, the difference in one thread thickness, so a walk normal, and two thread thicknesses, a walk retrace, um, is pretty noticeable just with the human eye on the sew out. The difference in two, walk retrace, and three, a walk bean, is far less noticeable. I don't know why, uh, but, it, but it tends to be. So when I do those details, when I'm moving forward through a form, I'll use a walk bean. 
when I want to end where I began, I'll use a walk retrace. Um, so you'll notice that kind of thing. Um, and I will be up there turning it on and off on the property bar and I will not have enough coffee and I will forget. And then I have to go back into my properties and turn it off. So um, don't be like me. You'll be better than me. Just remember to turn it off if you want it off. All right. Uh, let's look at other stitch types that you have available to you. Um, jump. This is funny to me because it's not actually a stitch type because it doesn't actually stitch. Uh, this is digitizing a machine movement. Let me take it out of 3D. So in 3D, you're not going to see anything. That's kind of weird. Uh, but outside of 3D, um, you will see a dotted line that's just representing a machine movement. Uh, this is, uh, for me, something that I would do with uh, an older machine where I was programming, okay, I want the machine to move here. Uh, it will not sew uh, anymore. I don't tend to use this. I haven't used this tool or this uh, stitch type in years. Um, but if I was digitizing for an older machine, this might be something that uh, I would use. If I wanted to move the machine to a specific point for some reason, um, this would be another way to do it. But uh, again, haven't used it for years. If I was digitizing for an older machine, this would be something that I would use. Um, and this is something that you will see evidence of in some expanded design. So if you see this dotted line, that's what you're looking at as a jump stitch. Um, but uh, jump movement, really, uh, jump stitch. And then um, we'll go back in and look at some of the other stitch types. So the next one in this list is a decorative. Um, need to press apply to make you be able to see that and probably need to make this a little bit bigger. Now, right now I have uh, the expanded stitches uh, still showing, so I'm gonna turn that off and go into 3D. There we go. Um, and the walk type decorative is just a decorative piece that will repeat along that line. And if I curve that line, if I could hit that line, there we go. If I curve that line, it will alter um, the angle of that decoration to follow along that line as best it can. And you can change that pattern by going into that pattern dropdown and selecting one of them. I have a few of them in here that I input myself, um, but, but you've got that capability there um, or through this drop down here. So you could do leaves and have uh, leaves follow the form. Now, uh, you'll notice this one is a walk type where it's one stitch after another. The last one that we had, sorry, the last one that we had that was the bead is actually a, a satin element that repeats. Um, so you can have satin pieces inside of that. And then as far as the properties for that, you can change the width of the element. So I can make the width bigger. So everything just got longer. You could change the height. So as it's going along the path, you can scale it that way. You can change the spacing, or you can have it choose to auto adjust the spacing or not, or the size. Um, so to, to fit, because that pattern may not naturally fit four of these pieces, it can either adjust the size or adjust the spacing so that it starts and ends where you ask it to. So that's what that adjustment is. All right, lastly, uh, the one that we have to look at is sequin. So if you are dealing with uh, a machine with a sequin attachment, you have the ability to add that as well. So you have a lot of properties available to you with the walk input method, but now you understand what they are and can use them to further your designs.